Goed morgen, mina dommer ook herrar. Konstnarer. Thank you so much, Mr. Niels Spangenberg, for the beautiful introduction. I am very honored to be here. Thank you, Peter, for asking me. And I'm also very honored because I have the, the how do you say this, the possibility to talk about this very ambitious subject, what is opera? What is opera? Um, I have been talking with many people before I came here uh, how to handle this. And I decided to make it a very personal story. So, this will not be an intellectual reading about facts, about opera, etc., etc., but my very personal story of what I think, really, what I think that opera means is for me. Good. My name is Anthony. Um, I am Dutch. Yes, I am Dutch. This also looks like a Dutch man. Um, my parents are from Suriname, that once was a, a colony of Holland. They came into Holland, they integrate there. We learn Dutch in a very good way. I speak better Dutch than the Dutch are speaking it. And that is also part of my am ambition. Um, I started singing not because my parents know anything about opera, nothing at all. We could dance. Yes, that's what we could, very well. But we didn't hear anything about opera. And when I told my aunts and my uncles and my cousins in Suriname that I was starting to go to the conservatorium, they said, what are you going to do this in a school? Otherwise, you can sing or not, but you are not going to a school to teach this. So I went to the conservatorium, but why did I start it singing? Not because of this passion for opera, but because I couldn't talk. Until my 15th, I stumbled. Stumbled like a madman. And the doctors told my parents, he has to sing. So I went to this doctor, and I went to this teacher, and I started singing. And then I went to the conservatorium. I didn't know the difference between Schubert and Schumann, Verdi or Puccini. I had no idea at all. Couldn't sing, f sight reading, nothing worked. So I had to work very hard to fit into this world. Yes, suddenly I had to fit into this world. For the second time, I have to fit into an organization. For the second time, I heard you have to look like your voice is have you heard this record of this big singer made in 1985 something like that 58 i have to say your voice is just like his voice so again i had to change in identity it was not who is this person who is standing here but do i fit into this world and I went to the conservatorium, finished it, um, and it was the worst exam in years. I had the lowest point any singer ever had at the conservatorium. I was really, I don't know where, but for me at that very moment, what is opera? If you had asked me then what was opera, Crisis, problems. All right, suddenly I get this job into the choir of the Nederlandse Opera, the Dutch Opera. And I worked there for 10 years, and suddenly there was this man for a production who was to work with us, Peter Sellers. He was there, and he came into the studio, and he said, Dear artists, for the first time, somebody to uh, called me an artist. And he started, right now, 
10,000 people are dying because they cannot eat. And I felt the whole choir thinking, what are we going to? We are going to work now or not? So for half an hour he went on talking, and then he said, that is the reason why we are going to do Oedipus Rex. So suddenly somebody combined for me the old opera with a necessity. A necessity why I am standing on that stage, why we are going to do it. Nobody ever told me that opera has to do with necessity. I always felt the aesthetic was the main thing, but not the necessity. And I had, a, I had something with him. So after the rehearsal, I went to him. I said, thank you so much. I said, I've seen you. We are going to eat this evening. So I went eating with Mr. Peter Sellers. And the next morning, four o'clock, I went home. So we talked for hours. And the next day, I went to the organization of the opera. I said, I'm going to quit with the opera choir. I'm going away. Then I started from a necessity, in combination with opera, my own foundation. And from that, the opera festival came. So in 2000, I was suddenly from a stumbling man from Suriname to the conservatorium, to the choir, artistic director of a festival. And that festival, that was for me the stage where I could develop the idea what is opera. And it is not something I did by myself, but I invited singers, because I am a singer, and I thought after the fact that the composers are always saying what the opera is, sorry, the directors are saying what opera is, sorry directors, I thought now it's the time for the singers to say what opera is. And we developed a way, let's first say this, this whole opera festival is started, it's going about the presentation of the youth operas. <coughs> so, um, in the first year, in 2001, I really had this platform where I presented what is happening right now within the youth opera. And that's also the reason we had all the beautiful contacts, Malmö, for instance, Maria, and all the other beautiful organizations. So, what is the opera for kids? Out of that, something else developed. And that is that I was longing to get into the society with the opera. So, this stage was no longer my platform where I wanted to work. So, we made operas in shops, in buses, in trains, in <coughs> houses, in, in, in whatever. That became our, yeah, let's call it a trademark, where we were working in. And as you were talking about, because that's so beautiful that we have this combination, I was not talking anymore about big operas in which we, are, we were thinking and com com composing. Because I wanted to have the flexibility. For me, opera became something which has to be flexible. I was so jealous about my friends in theater, dance, film. They could react on that what was happening right now in society. Instead of yeah, I can tell this story about changing the old opera and put a put it in a in a cafe or or with a man with a Nazi uniform or something. But no, I wanted to make it today. 
And because we f were having this idea, what is opera? F uh, flexible way of bringing art, we also thought, all right, no more operas of one hour or half an hour. We went to operas of 50 seconds, one minute, three minutes, <coughs> seven minutes, 10 minutes, 15, but all in the relation with the place we were doing it. So, for instance, in 2004, we, there was a big shopping hall in Utrecht who existed 30 years. And they asked me, Anthony, can you do something there? And I thought, 30 years, all right. 30 operas. In every opera, three people, two singers, one instrumentalist. The opera takes three minutes. Everybody will earn 300 euros. So that was the concept. And it all took three hours. And they all had to do it in every hour three times. And I think there came more than 3,000 people. That's all right. But that, so we we made this whole trademark of us in combination with the place we were doing it. Um, in 2005, the bus company existed 100 years. Um, and we made operas for the buses. So the people were just sitting there and in two days, all kinds of operas. Operas which were going about the history of the place the bus went to. I don't know if you've got it here, but on the buses you have the, the names of the last stop. And I don't know what these names mean often. So we took the history of this and the opera take the time the bus went from one place to the other. Then in 2008, we got a big opportunity. That was, for me, actually a very important, important year. 2008, in my idea, what is opera? I get this call in 2007 from Pierre O.D. So after seven years, he called me. Anthony, I've been watching you. I've been following you. And I want to ask you to come and make something for the Nederlandse Opera. That in one time, being working in the underground with those crazy projects, suddenly the crazy projects became serious projects. And he gave me the opportunity to make something big in, in Amsterdam. And it also helped us, the organization, that he became a prize from the, the, how do you call this, the Royal Dutch House of the work we were doing. 